Shalom and greetings, brothers and sisters of Master Yeshua the Messiah. Brother Nick here, and today's the 19th day of the 12th month on Yahuwah Allah solar calibrated, non-Gregorian, 364-day calendar. The Gregorian equivalent is March 6th, 2024. This video is being recorded and published from Famagusta region on the island of Cyprus here in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. And this video is about the Key of David, 2024 to 25, 364 day calendar. This video, I'm gonna share with you what I believe is the key of David and how we're gonna use it to go ahead and correctly calibrate the calendar. Before you click the links to download this coming New Year's calendar, there's much important information in this video that you first need to hear and receive and understand for yourself. Number one, the most important thing you need to know, well, there's a lot of important things in here. It's all important. But you need to understand that this coming year, Yom Teruah 2024, Yom Kippur 2024, begins the year of Jubilee. If you haven't watched my video from over three months ago, you need to watch this video because in this video I use archaeological information, astro-archaeological information of Babylonian tablets that record the heavens for Nebuchadnezzar. And I use that with the hidden year of Jubilee in Ezekiel 40 verse 1 and with 100% accuracy have restored the Jubilee timeline and we can know for certain that this year is going to begin the year of Jubilee. The second most important information in this video is that in this year's calendar on the spreadsheet version of the calendar I have restored the order of the 24 priests, the Kohanim, and the 24 singers, the Levite Shorarim, and I hope to make a full video on it but let me first give you a quick glimpse of what this looks like. So considering that, I shared with you that last video where I restored the chronology of the Jubilee timeline based on those Babylonian tablets. We can now use that same information to, to, uh, for, for, to find out the correct chronology of when Solomon dedicated the temple. And it was in the 29th week when Solomon dedicated the temple during the festival of uh, Sukkot. And so that's when the order would have started of during this year. So now what we can do, it's very simple, from Sukkot of 960 BC, we can just put down the order of the 24 priests and it just so happens that there's 24 weeks for, from the week of Sukkot, Sukkot, the week of Sukkot is the 29th week from that Sabbath, in during the Sabbath of Sukkot, when that would have started. And that first year you have 24 priests, they would have all served and then they would have started again and every six years that cycle repeats itself. So that's just amazing how that happened. So if we go from Sukkot 960 BC, we count all the way through, it brings us all the way up to uh, this year, right here, I have it uh, right here. Here you go, this is the, it's restored. So this is the priestly order, it's restored, and the Shorim order is also restored, and it's in this year's spreadsheet version of the calendar. The third most important piece of information in this video is that the Book of the Heavenly Luminaries in First Enoch has several failures. And it does not affect the 364 day calendar, but from my own observations that I've made, not from people giving me comments, not from people debunking this, I debunked it myself, there seems to be a, several things wrong with the Book of the Heavenly Luminaries, Book of Enoch, chapter 72 through 82. Number one, the sun's movement of both the solstices, the winter and summer solstices, summer and winter solstices, and the fall equinox do not line up with the six portals of Enoch 72. Second thing is, is that the math of the sun and moon doesn't line up as recorded in Enoch chapter 74. We've all known that. And then lastly, due to the procession of the equinoxes of Enoch chapter 82, it appears to be impossible. Um, as the star leaders are no longer what they were when this was allegedly written. Thus, these three things would debunk the uh, Enoch calendar, and thus, these, and thus instead I now establish that this calendar, this 364-day calendar, is the Psalm 19 Key of David calendar, as I will explain in this video. So again, here are all the locations that I compiled of all the locations where it states that the calendar is 364 days, twice in the Book of Jubilees, three times in the Dead Sea Scrolls, 
and there are five times in the book of Enoch heavenly luminaries. I put these down in red because it's not as important, it appears, but still we know from the book of Jubilees and from the Desert Sea Scrolls, the calendar is 364 days. So those who are familiar with my calendar that I've published the last six years, this is the calendar. This is a graphic that I made like five years ago. Um, First Enoch 72, it records the sun, the 12 months, and the six gates, or the six portals, three in the east and three in the west, and these actually fail. So this graphic hasn't changed, and this graphic is not to scale, but the sun's movements of the uh, summer solstice, fall equinox, and winter solstice don't line up exactly with the gates portals of Enoch 72, as Enoch 72 says. So, um, mind you, that using the day after the spring equinox as day one of month one, the first day of a beat, the first day of the 364-day cycle, what you have here is, uh, Tukufa, the circuit, what you have here is the summer solstice is on day number 93 after the spring equinox, not on day 91. So summer solstice is day 93, not day 91. So we'll go 30, 30, 31. So the 31st day should be the day that the sun gets to its maximum point, its furthest distance uh, north, and then it works its way back through the portal. But that doesn't happen. The summer solstice doesn't happen until like the second day of the fourth month right here. So that is a failure. Um, also, the fall equinox is on day number 187 after the spring equinox right here, not on day 182. So here you go, 91 days on this first three on the bottom, 91 again. So the 91 plus 91 is 182. So on the 182nd day, the fall equinox should be here. It should have equalized again. and But instead, there's a five-day difference that the fall equinox happens on day 187, not day 182. And then the winter solstice is on day 276, right here, not, uh, not on day 273, which is 91 times three is 273. So you would expect to see the winter solstice right here on the 31st day of the ninth month, but it doesn't happen then, it happens on day 276, which is a three day difference. So this is why I say that these gates and these portals fail, it appears, unless these gates and portals are less precise than what the text says, that it's a generic portals and just an example of how this should work. So that's something that to say. Now, our faith is Enochian. Of the five books in First Enoch, like I said, it appears only the Book of the Heavenly Luminaries is the only book not referred to or quoted by Messiah Yeshua. Messiah Yeshua quoted from four different books of four of the five books of First Enoch. He did not appear to quote from the Book of the Heavenly Luminaries. He said, are there not 12 hours of the day? Right before the spring equinox, he said that when he resurrected Lazarus. And then he had the Passover came after. So that looks like he's not quoting that. He's not using Enochian hours unless he's referring to like the summer solstice where there are 12 hours of light and six hours of darkness of Enochian hours, but 12 hours a day he's using Roman time there. Um, so that's something to consider. So here is a link to a PDF. There's a link to the PDF in the, the video description. I made this PDF of a section of R. H. Charles's work of his book on First Enoch, where he marked all of the times that the book of First Enoch is quoted or used in the Gospels and also in the New Testament writings and in the book of Revelation. Here's, here's the PDF. You can take a look for yourself. It's just a, several pages long. Three, page three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this PDF is nine pages long and it's all the locations in the Gospels, in Paul's writings, in James' writing, in Peter's writings, and in the book of Revelation uh, where Enoch is quoted. So please get this. Your faith is Enochian. You can download the link to this PDF in the video description. So please download this because your faith is Enochian. This does not take away 
from the rest of the book of Enoch, but there are problems in the book of the heavenly luminaries, first Enoch, that I identify by myself, that I'm sharing with you all, you should be aware of. Number four important information in this video is that at the Tekufa, which is the first day of the first year, which is the day after the spring equinox, is when kings go out for war. It's mentioned in the scriptures that it's at that time of the year when kings go out for war. And the question is, is this when World War III is going to erupt? And number five in this video, a very important thing, information for you to understand is I'm going to share you what I believe, what I identified to be, to be the key of David in Psalm 19. Psalm 19 verses 1 through 6. There's like five more verses or six more verses after this, but I'm going to only give you verses 1 through 6. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, King David. The heavens declare the glory of Allah, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. And in this psalm, I believe David secretly hid the key of David, which is to understand how the calendar works. I've talked about this several years ago, and I need to explain that to everyone here to understand and have the true basis of how the calendar is calibrated. And it's right here in verses 4, 5, and 6. So Psalm 19, as I shared, was written by King David and so verses 4, 5, and 6 is the hidden understanding to sync our days here on earth to the days and calendar, the Shane, that's going on in heaven. And we're to use, we're going to, and to sync our 364 day calendar year every year. And to do that, we have to understand that the sun goes into the tent, tabernacle, temple, and comes out as a strong man to run a race. King David designed the temple, and Solomon built it. The temple designed by David and the tabernacle of Moses were aligned with their door due east. In 2 Samuel 17, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 17, David brought the Ark of the Covenant into the city of David, and the Ark was placed in a tent, a tabernacle that King David prepared. So obviously, the door of the tent that King David had prepared for the ark was also aligned due east, 90 degrees as a moot. Since the tabernacle of Moses, tent of David, and the temple were all aligned due east, as a moot, 90 degrees as a moot, this means that the sun can only shine directly into the doors of the tabernacle of Moses, the tent of David, and the temple on the day of the spring equinox, or on the day of the equinox, when the sun rises due east 90 degrees as a moot. Here you see a artist rendition of the temple, and since the door of the tabernacle of Moses, tent of David, and temple were aligned due east 90 degrees, this means that the sun can only shine into the tabernacle of Moses, the tent of David, and the temple on the day of the equinox. It would shine due east. So the tabernacle was facing due east. So that means the sun is shining directly west into the, do into the gates, into the gate, into the temple lighting up, Jachin and Boaz lighting up the doors of the temple that would likely open on this day, possibly open and shined in there. And this is important because this means that the day that the sun shines into the tent or into the tabernacle or into the temple was not part, is, was not, and is not part of the 364 day calendar year. So we know from the Book of Jubilees and the Dead Sea Scrolls that the calendar year is 364 days long. I already shared those verses with you. 
We also know from observable science that the solar cycle is 365.24 days long. That means there is a difference of one day every year and two days every fourth year, or one day every solar cycle and two days every fourth solar cycle. This means to understand the calendar, we need to identify which day is the one day of the 365 day solar cycle that is not part of the 364 day calendar year. Again, to understand the calendar, we need to identify which is the one day of the 365 day solar cycle that is not part of the 364 day calendar year. And as I've shared, King David hid the one day in Psalm 19. And it's important to note that when D David wrote Psalm 19, the temple was not built. And here you can see their line has gone out through all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. And that is the key once we understand that. So here is a pie chart to scale, and this in blue, this sliver here is one day, and the rest of this pie chart is 364 days. So once we identify what this one day is, then we can understand how the whole calendar works, because the calendar is cyclical. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. So the earthly tent tabernacle temple is a representation of the heavenly above. So the tabernacle on earth, the temple on earth, the tent on earth is a representation of the heavenly above. And simple logic, for the sun to come out of his tabernacle, out of his chupa, out of his chamber, canopy as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, his chupa, the sun first has to go into the tabernacle. So if the race of the sun is the 364-day calendar, 364-day circuit, this means the day before the sun comes out of his tabernacle to run his 364-day race, is the day that the sun is in his tent, tabernacle, temple, and chamber, canopy, chupa. So the day that the sun is in the temple is not part of the 364-day race, okay? So he has to come out of it. This also means that the day after the sun runs his 364-day race is the day that the sun goes into his tent, tabernacle, slash temple, which is aligned 90 degrees azimut due east. So again, it's cyclical, 364 days, and then the 365th day is right here in the blue. It's the day that the sun shines into the temple. So this, the day that the sun shines in the temple that's facing 90 degrees due east is the day that's not part of the, of the calendar year. It's only a part of the solar cycle. So again, the the day the sun is in the tabernacle is both, right here, the day after he runs his 364-day race, right here, this is day number 364, right where the, the arrow is pointing to, day 364. He comes in afterwards for one day, and then it's also the day before the 364-day race starts again. He comes out of his temple as a strong man to run his race. So what David is doing in Psalm 19, verse 6, David is, describes the sun as a strong man running a race because in this case of strength, strength is endurance. As the sun keeps running the 364-day race year after year after year, shanae after shanae after shanae, the sun runs the race over and over and over again. And that's how it happens. He runs, he comes out, this is the temple, he comes out, this is day one right here with the highlighter rays, 364 days around, then after the 364th day is complete, he goes into the temple, into the tent of David, 
for one day every year which is the 365th day of the solar cycle and for two days every fourth year every fourth shane every fourth solar cycle which is days 365 and 366 of the solar cycle which is the this is the key to get into the tent to open the door it's right here to understand how the calendar all works because the sun is shining in and he, the sun, after that day's over, he comes out and starts the race again. And that's how it is. Hello, Aya. So again, this, the sun is east. The temple is facing due east, shining west, straight into the temple. And that's how it works. So again, to hammer this home, Psalm 19, verse 1 through 6 Okay, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The dome showeth his handiwork. Day unto day of their speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line, the ecliptic Maseroth, is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle, the spring equinox, for the sun. Okay, there is no tabernacle constellation in the Maseroth. But we do have the spring equinox. Remember, here on earth is represents the heavenly, okay? Which is as a bridegroom for the sun. The sun is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, the spring equinox, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. The race is the 364-day calendar. His going forth is from the end of, hev of the heaven, okay? The summer and winter solstices, the northern and southern tropics, and his circuit to Kufa unto the ends of it. Okay, because it's a circuit. It's a it's a it's a circuit, and there's nothing hid from the heat thereof. So, the sun in Psalm 19 is as a strong man because the sun runs the same race over and over and over again. Joshua told the sun and the moon to stand still. He did not tell the earth to stop. The ancients knew the earth is flat, and the sun goes into, shines into the temple tabernacle on the day of the spring equinox and comes out the following day, which is day one of 364 of his 364 day race. Hello, Waya. Since talking about the tent of David, because there's not a lot of verses on the tent except for 2 Samuel. Uh, except for First uh, Samuel chapter six, Second Samuel chapter six, verse seventeen. There's not a lot on the tent of David. Amos chapter nine, eleven. Okay, this is messianic verses about messianic prophecies. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. This is something to think, think about here at the end days about the tabernacle of David. We now have this understanding of Psalm 19 about the sun shining in to the into the tent, the, okay, the tent of David. This word is different. This is tabernacle. This is for Sukkot of David, the Sukkah of David. That's not the tent, but this is the Sukkah of David. Isaiah 58, 12, this is very sim this this is off the same theme of the prophecy of Amos 9-11. And they that shall be of thee, shall build the old waste places. And thou, thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the paths to dwell in. Without the tent of David, without understanding that the sun goes into the tabernacle that was aligned due east, we can't restore the paths of the calendar. But now that we have this understanding of the path of Psalm 19 and the hidden key of David, we can now restore those paths of the calendar. The Sabbath day is now restored. Jubilees chapter 6 said the Sabbath day would become lost. The path of the Holy the Feast of Yahweh can now be restored. We can now sync our calendar here on earth back up to the days that are going on in heaven. Hello, Yah. That is the significance of understanding this calendar. Isaiah chapter 16, verse 5, another messianic verse. And in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in truth, and in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. 
So this is about the tabernacle of David. These are the verses about it. This, these right here, this tabernacle of David is the tent of David. This tabernacle of David right here is the sukkah of David. But it's all about restoring the ancient paths so you can find rest for your souls and keep the Sabbath day and to get on Yahweh's feast so Israelites can be restored. So now that I talked about the spring equinox and how the sun shines into the spring into the temple and the tabernacle i want to bring up ezekiel chapter 8 there's false people out there that love their lunar calendar that want to use ezekiel chapter 8 to discredit the solar calendar the 364 day calendar because of the events that were going on in ezekiel chapter 8 remember there's the vision of idolatry in the temple and each time there's three times here in verse 5 through 6 there was abominations and for 7 through 13, it was worse, and 14 and 15, it was even worse. And then he brought Ezekiel into the inner court of Yahweh's house, the temple. And behold, at the door of the temple of Yahweh, between the porch and the altar, were about 25 men, and they're men, they're not called priests here, with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. Then he said unto me, Thou hast seen this, O son of man. It is a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations with the, which they commit here. For they have filled the land with violence, and they have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they have put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in my fury. My eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears, with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. So this is about judgment that's going to come. Judgment when on the day of spring equinox, because what's going on here, we can clearly prove that this day is the spring equinox. Let me read this verse again. Ezekiel 8, 16. And he brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of Yahweh, between the porch and the altar, were about 25 men with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh, and their faces toward the east, and they worship the sun toward the east. For the Dewey Rames translation, it says, And they adored towards the rising of the sun, the sun toward the east. And what you need to understand, if the temple is oriented due east, and there are 25 men, they're not called Kohanim, but 25 men symbolizing the 24 priest families, the Kohanim families, and also the 25th family of the high priest family and they all had their back to the temple then they too were facing due east to have your back to the temple they have to be facing due east which means that they were worshiping the sun on the day of the spring equinox the real priests not men the real kohanim not men should be facing the temple and the sun illuminating the temple on the day of the spring equinox but these men had their backs to the temple, and they were worshiping the rising sun. So right here is a graphic that I put together. Whether they were on the porch right here, or right here between the steps to the porch and the altar, they had their backs towards the temple, which means that they were facing due east right here, and they were worshiping the sun due east. So go back to this picture. You can see this artist's rendition. Here they are with their backs towards the temple, worshiping out of the gate of the temple at the rising sun in the east. For them to be doing so, this can only be done all, all, technically on the day of the spring equinox. They can only be looking through this period here on the day of the spring equinox when the sun is rising in the east. And that means that Ezekiel chapter 8, 16 is the day of the spring equinox. When the sun would be shining directly into the temple, but instead of looking at the temple being illuminated with all of its gold, it's gilded, the walls inside the temple were gilded with gold. You have the, they should have been facing the temple right here. They should have been looking as the creation is paying homage, shining right into the temple of Yahweh, uh, to the to the creator, Yahweh Allah Haim. They should, the, the, the 25, men who should have been the the high priests and the priestly families should have had their backs to the sun they should have been worshiping yahweh in his illuminated temple the holy place 
the sanctuary inside the temple right here would have been gilded with of gold, walls of gold, and would have been glowing. Jachin and Boaz right here on the porch, the two bronze pillars should have been uh, illuminated with the sun shining, hitting it perfectly. Okay, more than likely the doors would have been open on this day and it would have been glowing. But instead they were had their backs to the temple. They had their backs to the temple and they were worshiping the rising sun. They were being pagans. They were mithra worshiping. They were practicing evil. And it's important to note in Acts chapter 6, very early on, right after the Ruach HaKodesh was given, Acts chapter 6 records a great number of Kohanim became obedient to the faith of Messiah Yeshua. Verse 7, the word of Allah increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests of the Kohanim, the 25 families, the 25 men that we see depicted in Ezekiel chapter 8, those families became obedient to the faith. Hello, well, yeah. And this is Ezekiel's temple layout. And in the future, the sun, it's also aligned due east. And in the future, the sun is going to shine in through the eastern gates and hit the altar. Okay, maybe the top of Jachin, maybe the top of the temple will be illuminated, but it's going to be shining due east. And as I understand, Psalm number 118 is to be read on the day of the spring equinox. It, because in Psalm 118, it speaks of the gates of righteousness that is to be opened up. And the gates of righteousness that are going to be opened up is going to be the east gate right here in the inner court of Ezekiel's temple. That the priest, the prince, the priest Messiah of the millennial reign, he gets to go in and he doesn't get to go through the gate, but he gets to go into the gate and sup and have a fellowship with Yahweh Allah So that's how that works right here. And this is the gate of righteousness. So I'm going to go ahead and read Psalm 118 to you. You can pull it up on your computers if you want. I have the King James Version opened up. Oh, give thanks unto Yahweh, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear Yahweh say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon Yahweh in distress, and Yahweh answered me and set me in a large place. This is about the Messiah, guys. Yahweh is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Yahweh taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in princes. All nations compassed me about, but in the name of Yahweh will I destroy them. They have compassed me about, yea, they compassed me about, but in the name of Yahweh I will destroy them. They have compassed me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of Yahweh I will destroy them. For thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but Yahweh helped me. Yahweh is my strength and song and has become my Yeshua, my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous, the Sadok. The right hand right here of Yahweh doth valiantly. Yod, Shin, Vav, Ayin. The right hand of Yahweh doth valiantly. The right hand of Yahweh is exalted. The right hand of Yahweh doth valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of Yahweh. Yahweh hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over to, unto death. Here it is, guys. Here, Open to me the gates of righteousness. Right here, that is the east gate of the inner court. This is about the millennial Messiah. Yeshua is the Messiah, but Messiah Yeshua has his own servant, who is the other second Messiah. I've shared about that all on my channel, okay? This is about Messiah Yeshua. This is about Messiah Yeshua's Messiah. Yahweh has his, he has a Messiah. Open to give me, open to me the gates of righteousness. This is the east gate of the inner court of Ezekiel's millennial ring temple. And I will go into them and I will praise Yahweh 
this gate of Yahweh, which the righteous shall enter in. The, the Zedek one, the righteous one, is going to enter into this one and have fellowship meals with Yeshua, Messiah Yeshua, in here. Okay? Messiah Yeshua is high priest here on earth. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my Yeshua, my salvation. The stone which the builders refused has become the head stone of the corner. This is Yahweh's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which Yahweh hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Okay? Which day? Well, the day that this, the sun goes in to the temple. That's into the tabernacle, into the tent. Okay? Um, this is likely a day that the Messiah will bring in a free will offering. He gets to bring in free will offerings on this day. He's going to go in, rejoice, and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Yahweh. O Yahweh, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he, the, the Messiah, the end time Messiah that cometh in the name of Yahweh. Comes in, in Yeshua, Yahusha's name. We have, because he's the Messiah of Yahusha. Yahusha. We have blessed you out of the house of Yahweh. Right here, the house of Yahweh. Okay, we are now the house of Yahweh. The Ruach dwells and dwells in us. Those who dwell in us, who it dwells in. Allah, Allah, Allahim is Yahweh, which have showed us light. Okay, he showed us light right here. Uh, the light is shining from the east and shines to the west right here. Okay, as the light shines from the east and lights up to the west right here. Yahweh has showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords right here at the altar. Look at the lights hitting the altar right here directly in the on the day of the spring equinox. Even unto the horns of the altar, thou art my Allahim, and I will praise thee. Thou art my Allahim, I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto Yahweh, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So the gates of righteousness, the east gate, is opened up for the Messiah, Yeshua's Messiah, going here. Okay, and that's how this works. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Okay, this is for the Messiah. Okay, this is wisdom. And of Proverbs chapter 8, Yeshua, the testimony of Yeshua, the okay, case the spirit of prophecy, okay, wisdom right here, blessed is the man that heareth me, watch, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors, right here, the eastern gate, that's about that man, blessed is that man, the end time Messiah. So now that I brought you through that, brothers and sisters, it's a lot to take in, I've now published the 364 day calendar uh, since 2018. This year is my seventh year of publishing it. The solar calibrated non Gregorian calendar. You, the link to, you can now download this calendar at enochcalendar.com. I'm going to be changing up the URL later on, possibly if I have time to do that. There are links to this year's calendar in the description. Again, uh, put first published this calendar from my spring equinox reading in March 20th, 2018, um, in Jerusalem at the sundial there. It's a pagan sundial. They have the black box of Saturn in it and a phallic uh, black symbol hidden into this thing. It's totally pagan, just like Ezekiel chapter 8. Nothing new under the sun, you know, pun intended. And unfortunately, now that the 364-day calendar is becoming more popular, there's many false types of 364-day calendars out there that reject the true calendar and they publish counterfeit 364-day calendars because they still use the false Gregorian days of the week and the false Saturday Sabbath. Again, Jubilees chapter 2 verse 9 says that the sun, the great sign on the earth is for the days of the week. And there's more false calendars out there than just this, okay? Jubilees chapter 2, verse 9. And Allah appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth. Okay, this oath, this gadol oath on the Eretz for days, yams, and for Sabbaths. Okay, that means weeks. 
which are the days of the weeks, and for months, and for feasts, the Feast of Yahweh of Leviticus 23, and for years, and for Sabbath, uh, Sabbath of years, and for Jubilees, and for all seasons of the years, all Moeds. So you have the Feast of Yahweh, okay, which are the Moeds of Yahweh, and then you also have the seasons of the years, which are the four seasons that we have. And the seasons are not based on the moon, they're only based on the sun cycle, the solar cycle, not on the lunar cycle, okay? So that's what we have here. They all don't use the great sign. All those calendars that I shared with you, they're 364 day calendars. They don't use the great sign on the earth for the days of the week, all right? They only, they rather they use the Gregorian days of the week. And this concept of using the sun and creating the Gregorian, creating the weekdays, the days of the week every year, it's not a foreign concept, okay? The Babylonian lunar calendar, actually, this is what they did. I explained that in my video. 364-day solar Sabbath calendar versus the 354-day lunar Sabbath calendar. And I explained that the lunar Sabbath calendar that's circulating in messianic circles today is nothing more than the ba ancient Babylonian lunar calendar just with a new different name, just rebranded as the lunar Sabbath calendar. You can read about it right here. On the Wikipedia page, the Babylonian calendar, seventh day week in the Sabbath, counting from the new moon, the Babylonians celebrated every seventh day as a holy day and also called an evil day, meaning unsuitable for, pro prohibited, for prohibited activities. On these days, officials were prohibited from various activities and common men were forbidden to make a wish. And at least the 28th was known as a rest day of each of them. Okay, and then they offer, different offerings were made to a different god and goddess, apparently a nightfall to avoid the, prohibit, the pro, prohibitions. So what they did is every new moon would reset the days of the week. So you had new moon day, and then you would count off days one through seven of the week, and then you would do that days one through seven again for four weeks in a row. That's 28 days, and then on the 29th day or on the third or on the 30th day would be the new moon day. And then you would, after that new, new moon day would interrupt the, the, the seven day cycle, the seven day cycle it would reset with days one through seven, one through seven, one through seven, one through seven, and then you would have new moon day again or a buffer day and then new moon day. So that last week could have eight days in it. And then you would have the new moon day and do it again. So that's how it works. So this was not a foreign concept even Josephus, even Philo documented this in his writings about this lunar Sabbath type day. Jubilees chapter 6, verse 32 to 37. And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to the reckoning 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year. And they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts. For everything will fall out in them according to to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feasts. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to this, according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons, and their years will be dislodged from this order. And they will disturb the seasons, and their years will be dislodged, and they will neglect their ordinances. And all the children of Israel will forget and not find the path of the years, and will forget the new months and seasons and Sabbaths, and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. For I know, and from henceforth will I declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising, for the book lies written before me, and on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feasts of the covenant and walk according to the feasts of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. So 364 minus 10 days is 354 day lunar calendar. For this reason, the years will come up upon them when they will disturb the order and will make an abominable day, the day of testimony, and an unclean day, a feast day, and they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy, for they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. So here you see it right here. 
brothers and sisters, that they would go wrong to the Sabbath days by this Babylonian cycle, this Babylonian calendar, every new moon resetting the days of the week. Rather, the days of the week are reset every spring equinox according to the sun on the 364-day calendar. So currently right now, we are on the Gregor we have the Gregorian days of the week, which are days Sunday through Monday, and they are not ancient, but they are a, a common era invention. At the time, Messiah Yeshua, the Romans had an eight-day week called the Nindunal Cycle, as you can see here. They had an eight-day week, the Nindunal Cycle, the Romans eight-day week. They had a Nindunal, ci Nindunal Cycle. Also, they had a seven-day week. At the time of Messiah Yeshua, Rome had a lunar calendar, which they adopted from the Greeks, who adopted it from the Persians, which could be attributed to the Babylonians and the Assyrians. And the lunar calendar consisted of the seven-day week, which I already explained right here. The seven days of the week were calibrated each month on the new moon by the new moon day. So by the new moon, they would recalibrate these days. The day after the new moon, you would start with day one. And this was the same lunar calendar adopted by those of the Yehud Babylonian province. So when uh, the when the Judahites came back from Babylonian captivity, it was now became the Yehud uh, Babylonian province. Okay, so that's very important. Actually, well, it was a, it was the Babylonian province before, and then the uh, Persians took over. And it became the Yehud uh, Medo-Persian Medo province, okay? And this was the calendar that they brought back with them, the Medo-Persian Babylonian lunar calendar. And this is what they uh, based it off right here. And this is what's called a parapegma. And this calendar was found in the Baths of Titus, which was built in 81 AD. And on this, we see the seven-day planetary week right here, seven days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? And then you see the 12 different constellations right here, but we see the seven days week right here. Day one was actually Saturn's day. You can see Saturn right here with the sickle. Day two, you see the rays out here. This was the sun day where we get... Sunday from. So you get Saturday from Saturn's day, Saturn's day, day one. Day two is Sun's day. The moon day right here, this is the moon on top of her, on top of this pagan goddess's head. This is day three. Weekday four was Mars. Weekday five was Mercury. Weekday six was Jupiter. And weekday seven was Venus day. So that was the planetary day of the week. Sometime later, I believe possibly around Constantine, time period, uh, Saturn's day was changed from weekday number one to weekday number seven, and is now called Saturday. So it was moved from here to here, and they started the days of the week on Sunday, which is what we have now on our Gregorian calendar, days uh, Sunday through Saturn day, and that's what you have right here. Moving Saturn's, moving Saturn's day from day one to day seven did not switch the day of the week. Rather, it just shifted the days of the week of the seven of the continuous seven-day week. But that continuous seven-day week didn't happen until like around 321 or something, possibly, or even later. Because even then, the lunar calendar, the days of the week would reset according to Philo. This is how it was going at that time, according to to the moon, okay, 13 months, 29 and a half days each month, 354 days a year. That's how it worked, and the days of the week would reset. This is not a foreign idea. This is an ancient idea, an ancient understanding. We've just been indoctrinated with the Gregorian fixed, Gregorian fixed days of the week, which we have now of the Sunday, right here, day one, through Saturn's day, day number seven. So the Jewish Sabbath, the Gregorian Saturday is not Yahweh Allahim's heavenly Sabbath day going on in heaven. We have to use the sun every year to sync our days of the week here on earth to the calendar and the days of the calendar going on in heaven. I've explained this for several, many years now.
And even the Dead Sea Scroll scholars and translators and professors, they had this incorrect. They didn't understand this when they were trying to put back the Dead Sea Scroll calendar. They also used the false supposition of the Gregorian days and they erroneously put the Gregorian days into their calendar. As you see, this is Geza's Verms said the first of the Sabbath right here. And then he puts in parentheses equals Sunday. The second equals Monday. But this is wrong. He even didn't understand that the days of the week were calibrated by the sun, okay, by the day of the spring equinox. He failed to understand this. Geza Verms failed to understand this. All the Dead Sea Scroll calendar, people that talk about the Secretarian calendar, they misunderstood this, okay, and it's been a roadblock to the true calendar. Martinus and Tetchler, they also misunderstood this, the Sabbath, i.e. Sunday. They did not understand this. This is an error. And not all of the Dead Sea Scrolls are good. Some of the calend calendrical scrolls, especially regarding the moon, uh, the moon days and the moon cycles, are probably likely people at the time trying to restore the calendar back to the original understanding. And I hope to put some more videos out on that and debunk the, some of the calendrical moon sightings of the moon. And I plan on doing that coming up, especially regarding the Jubilee cycle, that it's not based on the, what the moon is doing, it's based on what the sun does on the spring equinox. As I've restored the calendar, the year's chronology all the way back, to restore the priestly order, okay? Again, like I shared, there's already many false versions of the 364 day calendar. I put a video out, this wasn't two years ago, this is an old screenshot. This video is from like four years ago. This video is like from five years ago that the, sab that the Sabbath, it's the solar Sabbath. It's calibrated every year based on the spring equinox. So therefore it is the solar Sabbath slash heavenly Sabbath. We are syncing our days here on earth with the days in the calendar of heaven to worship Yahweh Allah in heaven. This is how it's supposed to be done. Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And here's a clip uh, from 2019 spring equinox here in Jerusalem, Jubilees 2.9, and Allah appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth, okay, to be a sign on the earth, the sun is cast a shadow, okay, or the sun has a shadow or it's shining through like the eastern gate of the temple or the, sh the shadow of the gnomon that we use to measure the spring equinox, okay. Also, you can use the line, you can use the plummet line going straight down and measure the spring equinox, okay. Uh, and that's about Zerubbabel, uh, you know, he's given the plumb line there in Zechariah, another messianic prophecy. And here is my video from almost five years ago now. This is the day of the spring equinox or the day of the great sign. Jubilees 2 verse 9, and Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbath of years, and for Jubilees, and for all seasons of the years. And that sign on the earth is the shadow that the sun casts using a sundial device to read the days. So this is how the calendar is calibrated. I'm here in Jerusalem, Teddy Park, outside Jaffa Gate, right over here. Uh, we got the western walls of the, the old city of Jerusalem, which was the Ottoman Empire. We're here at the sundial and uh, we're back here again. It's about 11.44 right now. Solar noon is at about 11.46 and then spring equ equinox, Jerusalem time is gonna be tonight, 23.58. And 10 minutes before, it's gonna be midnight. Midnight is gonna be at... And so I shared with you already the group of false 364 day calendars that use the Gregorian days a week. This is also another false version of the calendar. They incorrectly start the calendar on the day of the spring equinox when the sun is in the tabernacle, not when the sun comes out of it. This calendar right here correctly uses the spring equinox, but does not use the 364 day calendar. Incorrectly, they use the 360 day calendar and they manipulate texts of Genesis chapter eight to support their manipulated false calendar. Um, and incorrectly uses the Gregorian days of the week and Gregorian Sabbaths, and they incorrectly place the barley wave sheep during the
the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Unleavened Bread rather than the day after it. And here's my video about that the First Fruits Festival of the Barley Wave Sheep does not occur during the week of Unleavened Bread, but rather the first day of the week after the Sabbath of the week of Unleavened Bread, as it says in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And more so I prove from Leviticus 23. Hello, yeah. So as you can see in my video from several years ago, how to rightly divide the Feast of Leviticus 23, there's literally a separator that Yahweh literally divided himself when uh, these were when he spoke these words. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Then he gave, that was in verse 1 to 2, then he gave the instruction for the seventh day Sabbath. Then he gave the instruction for the Passover and under unleavened bread. And then he said, and Yahweh said unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. So right here, this is a divider. It rightly divides the feasts. You cannot have Passover and unleavened bread unless you have the correct seventh day Sabbath day, which is determined based off of the sun. There's 52 Sabbaths a year, and you have to base it off the uh, spring equinox. So if you don't have that correct Sabbath day, you can't have the correct rest of the feast. That's why this is put in here in Leviticus 23.3, gives the Sabbath day, the Passover, unleavened bread, then a divider, and then you see the wave sheet is given of the barley, and then the first fruits of the wheat. So these two festivals are connected. Then there's a divider of trumpets, and then Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, there's no speak to the children of Israel. Why? Because trumpets and Yom Kippur, Yom Kippurim, are kind of attached. They're not attached like the other ones are, but they're kind of attached. And the reason why they're kind of attached is because of the 10 days of awe or the 10 days of repentance in the book of Gad the seer. So that's why it's separate, but they're together because in the Jubilee year, they're definitely going to be together. And then it says, And Yahweh spake unto Moses, speak unto the children of Israel. And then Sukkot and the addition day is given. And then it wraps it up. And Yahweh declared unto the children of Israel the feast of Yahweh. So this is how to rightly divide the festivals. And this is how come the Dead Sea Scrolls is correct that the barley wave sheaf is not on the Sabbath during unleavened bread, but, on the, but not on the first day after the Sabbath during unleavened bread, but on the first day of the week, on the Sabbath after unleavened bread. And also we know from the Book of Jubilees uh, regarding the festival of Shavuot, it's pegged to the 15th day of the third month. And if we just count back seven Sabbaths, it lands on the 26th day of the first month. So therefore, we also know that this is correct and it's not part of unleavened bread. Hello, well, yeah. So again, the 2024-25 authentic 364-day solar calibrated calendar is available. Get the formats to you, and it's important to get the correct version. I have two different versions depending on where you get the spring equinox this year. Possibly it looks like the March 19th is going to be the day of the equinox for the Americas. Okay, there's a lot of groups out there now that are measuring the calendar. Okay, watch out because they might be measuring the calendar, but they might have a false version of the, the, the calendar. They might not be using 364 days. They might only be using 360 days. The 360-day calendar is the calend is the prophetic uh, variation, variant of the 364-day calendar. I've already explained that. I have a video about that. Okay, so it appears, according to the NASA data, possibly, likely, it appears this year, that the Americas are going to get the equinox reading on March 19th, while the rest of the Earth is going to get it on March 20th. That means the, Mar uh, the Americas are going to be at the head of the year, at the beginning of the year on Earth, while the rest of the year is going to be behind on March 20th. We're at the end. Again, I've, I've already explained this before, the modern man-made fixed international dateline right here this is fictitious and artificial it's not true okay the real international dateline moves approximately five hours and 50 minutes every year that that 0 0.24 of a day which is five hours and 50 minutes about 
It moves every year. The international date line right here moves five hours and 50 minutes every year. Not This is a representation. This projection map is not to scale. It's not to scale, but it moves like this. Okay, It moves in this way like this, it appears. Okay, This is what it does. So this year, the year it looks like it possibly begins here, and the Americas get on the 19th. Then it hits the international date line right here, changes over to the 20th, and then the rest of the Earth gets there for the day that gets the day of the equinox over here. So again, let me go ahead and run that back. Okay, the real international date line it moves every year like this, and then this year it appears that the international date line is possibly going to be here. Look at the question marks and exclamation point. Look for yourselves. But it looks like the Americas are going to get it here. Here is the NASA data. Here's some of the NASA data that I have. So uh, this is in Natal, Brazil, right here on the most eastern part of South of South America of the continent. There, if you go down to that area, it says right here that they're going to get the equinox at midnight. You know, 12:06 p.m local time Wednesday March 20th 2024 well that means that's gonna happen at midnight so that means during that 19th the night of, during the daytime of the 19th because the date the Gregorian date had just switched from the 19th to the 20th seven six minutes prior at midnight it switched from uh, the 19th to the 20th that means that they're probably gonna get their sign reading possibly on the 19th that's how looking at the data and watching this over the previous years that's how I kind of anticipate that okay so that is again just so you know that is right here at the tip right here at the tip of Natal Brazil is right here at the most eastern part of Brazil they get it at midnight which means on the on the 19th which is the night of the 19th they get it at midnight on the 20th so the day of the 19th they're probably going to get their equinox reading that day. The straight line reading is going to get on that day. Same thing, like same thing with the Americas. Okay, because here for the Americas, I have it here in New York. Um, just using New York on, they get the equinox, spring equinox reading at eleven uh, oh six p.m. Okay, 2306, so 1106 p.m. on the 19th, they get it. March 19th, they get it. So you have New York right here. They get it on the 19th at 1106. So right here in New York City on March 19th at 1106 p.m. at nighttime, 2306, 23 hours, 6 minutes on the night, night of the 19th, that on so right here is when when the equinox event happens according to time and date according to NASA okay but what I'm saying is during that daytime before the nighttime is likely when the Americas is going to get their equal straight line reading on March 19th likely the South America also got the straight line reading so I'm anticipating March 19th to be the straight line reading for the Americas, then the sun is going around this way, and then the date changes here, March 20th, we get, uh, and then the sun begins to rise here, and on that March 20th is when Oceania, Asia, Africa, Europe are all going to get their straight line reading on the Gregorian March 20th day of the straight line. So that means there's two different versions, and this is why I have two different versions for the calendar. So make sure you get the correct version for where you are at. So here I am on EnochCalendar.com. Again, I plan on changing this domain to like HeavenlyCalendar.com or 364DayCalendar.com. I have both of those domains. Come here to get the calendar this year. Click the links in the description or come here to EnochCalendar.com. Click on the... This tab right here for the 24-25 calendar, there's two different versions depending on where you get the equinox reading. Likely, like I shared, 
More than likely, I, I anticipate the Americas are going to get it, the straight line on the 19th. I could be mistaken. Everybody might, got, might get it on the 20th. I don't know that for a fact, but from my best guess, it's going to be the 19th. There's solar calendar groups out there that are doing straight line tests, and more and more people are doing straight line tests about that. But my guess is it's going to happen on the 19th for the Americas and March 20th for here. So the following day is day one. So in the Americas, if they get the equal, if you get the equinox reading on March, the straight line reading on March 19th, that means that March 20th is going to be day one, month one, the first day of Abib. So therefore, you need to use these calendar versions right here, the March 19th equinox versions of the calendar here. But if you're in the parts of the earth where it's you get the equinox reading on March 20th, you need to use the March 20th equinox versions here. You can access these by clicking these links, going to the Google Drive and downloading them from Drive, or you can go March 19th and download it by clicking this little icon right here in the PDF viewer. It says download. So you can just click that to get the March 19th version of that one. Click this right here to download it here. Scroll down here. You can click this one here and this one here. Now, <clears throat> this year I did mention that I have the Equinox reading. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up, enlarge it. And as you can see, this year for this version, the spreadsheet version, there is the restored priestly and show, uh, order. There's restored order of the 24 Kohanim families and the restored order of the 24 Shorarim families, the singers, the Levites. So this has been restored. And as you can see, right here, we start week week one, month one of the whole cycle. It repeats itself. So the first priestly families restarts right here on the Sabbath. And I will hope to make a video more in depth next week explaining how I did that. Okay, so check this out and you can take a look at that. And I hope to make a video again. This year is the year of Jubilee. I put this in red, these nine days right here, because of the 10 days of awe. Because on this day could be very prophetic. Events could be happening here uh, of the 10 days of awe. And then we have the Jubilee here on the uh, Day of Atonement right here during 2024. So I hope that you brothers and sisters are all blessed. We've been on the correct calendar date with the correct calibrations since I published this video back in like 2018, March 2018. Hello, Ayah. I hope that you're blessed by the information in this video. It's okay to question the book of he the heavenly luminaries. There might be a couple of parts in it that are correct, but most of it is incorrect, it appears. There's three things wrong with it, therefore I'm not calling it the Enoch calendar anymore. And that's okay. And it's okay to say that. And because we still are using the sun to calibrate the calendar as it should be, as it was hidden, Psalm 19, hello, ya. So I hope that you're blessed and I'm signing off. And shalom to all my brothers and sisters out there, Messiah Yeshua, who have his testimony and guard his commandments. Shalom to you.